All right, you guys, here's the motor in the 74 finished. Got it all in there, runs great. Got this uh, sniper set up on there. It's a sniper two, so it's the more advanced setup. Seems to be working good. I, I think it, it programmed quickly, worked well. I got it wired in uh, uh, pretty easy. Of course, I do a setup on these where I have a key on panel and then a, a hot all the time panel. I've got uh, kill switches that uh, kill the whole power to the whole thing. And then I have uh, light lights under the hood for if I get out and we have to work on it at night or do anything crazy. And then I keep an onboard charger on this thing. I might have showed this before, and I run a more modern alternator. But I got a wired in fuel pressure regulator um, that goes to that EFI setup. I left these blueprint uh, valve covers on there. That's the crate motor that I bought. Um, because they, they were sealed, they're good, and um, uh, I'll leave them for a little while. I wish they didn't say blueprint on them. I wish they were just blank or something. I could make plates to go over them where it says Bronco or something. But it's okay. I mean, it's they, they're nice. They're good quality. But I got an onboard charger that I keep plugged in. Might have showed it. Plug it in down here. I built that. And then... Uh, where the cam was, I added this extra vacuum tank, and that gives it um, a little more vacuum because it felt like I was, my brakes got a little firmer because it wasn't pulling as much vacuum. But uh, I think it's okay. It might have just been me feeling it that way. But yeah, so it works pretty good. I've got a you know everything on relays and everything fuse protected, and I got the motor dialed in and. The, it runs good, and then it's got a brand new radiator and, uh, and fan, and I, I supplement it with an electric fan in the front for when it's trail riding and you're going slow. But it seems to uh, do good, and I got a modern 140 amp alternator on it. This is kind of the what I had to, what I did with this in order to make it perform better. I wanted a fresh motor because you run an oxygen sensor with that fuel injection and it gets contaminated if you burn a little oil because the other motor burned a little oil. I think I said that before. And so um, I wanted a fresh motor. These these things run about, this wasn't bad. It's a 306, 370 horsepower. And it runs, um, it's, a, a, it's about about six grand is around, around what it cost. And then that uh, EFI all together with, with another fuel pump because I bought a, an aftermarket fuel pump because it didn't come with one. There's kits that have them, but I, I bought that. And then the uh, that's probably 1700 1800 So you're looking at about probably eight or $9,000 for a setup like this, um, which I guess isn't too bad. And then uh, fill that. And then the other, well, the other thing I had, I did this. I got a switch where I bump it so I can, uh, oops, I shut off my light. I can bump it. If I turn down the key, it'd probably start. But, uh, yeah. And then uh, it uh, it starts up pretty good, runs good with this, with this setup. I got, pot, I got the main switch on, so let me go in. I'm going to do a similar setup on the 66, but with a different fuel injection. You get inside of it and or I don't even have to make sure I got it in park and then turn on the key I got the fans running let me kill that fan it comes on automatically now it should start up control the timing but you as you guys can see it fired right up cold start
pushing 60, 65. I keep it about 60, 65 PSI. Seems to work good at that. Timing's all set good. Even though the this system can control timing with their distributor, but I'm running this MSD setup. Go back here and get a little noise. good on the camera but yeah it fires right up you let the fuel pump run you they said to give it like two seconds when you first start it so that it pressurizes the system and then it does a pulse um, into the uh, throttle body and then that pulse gives it a little shot kind of like if you push to pump the gas on a carburetor and then it fires up if you do it too soon you might have to pulse it again, but then if you play with it too much, you put too much fuel in there and it could flood it. But it's running good, and then, uh, it's working well. And then I have uh, over here this little this little green light over here is the. Uh, and again, I don't know how much you guys are hearing on this, but that's the Bluetooth setup for the uh, phone. So I can see everything this thing does on the phone. That's an extra couple hundred bucks. I, I got it. I don't know if it's really necessary because they have a little screen that goes with it. Then I've got a front and rear camera on this down here. You guys can see that. Kind of cool. Playing around with it. And then if you can see, and I don't know if I've ever showed this before on this vehicle. But I made my own dash panel, and that panel comes out, and I can work on the electrical in here. And then I've got a boat, a waterproof boat radio in it that has NOAA weather on it. And that works pretty good. That's Bluetooth setup. It's got speakers in the back. I might have showed some of this before. I've got these see-through visors, things like that. This Dakota Digital Dash right here works well. It gives out all the, it might not pick it up on the camera, but it gives out the same information, similar information as to uh, what's going on with the uh, engine, everything, your oil, your temperature, things like that. And you can get that on the phone as well. Let me shut this off. It's kind of cool because I have individual wipers. I can run one or run two. That was kind of a neat thing that you can get with this that you set up. I relocated the phone up to here so I can see maps better. This thing, this little green light kind of works cool. It, I did it, it tells you that it when it's talking, in other words. But it also gives you a little light at night, which is kind of neat. But yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and shut this back off because I don't know how much you guys are hearing me. It could just be a waste. So yeah, that and then we got tilt steering. And uh she she works pretty good all set up like this and then uh, uh it's got you know it warmed up a little didn't thermostat didn't quite open yet and then uh, uh yeah worked well this is my upstairs garage or basically a main house garage it's a three bay and i keep uh her gen six in here and then i keep the four-wheeler up here and the two motorcycles these are Indians. I need to use them a little more. She has a Scout Bobber, which is pretty nice. I keep them on trickle chargers. And then I have a Chieftain Dark Horse. They're both 2018s. I bought them new, and they work pretty good. I haven't fired up this beast in a while. Let's see if it even does, even it wants to do anything. It boots up. That's the. Uh, do a little start on this thing. Fuel injection. Fires up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Again, I don't know if you guys can hear me, so forgive me. And then uh, it does have all the information on here. You guys may have seen these before. That's where you hook up your helmet. It's 
it's thinking now, so it's probably updating itself. Go back to the. But you have different screens that it scrolls through. You have a map. You have the set where it talks to your phone. You have music. And it is touch screen as well. And then it has uh, it's the screens and shift pattern, things like that. And you can switch between these screens um, and, do, and set them up different ways. It's kind of neat. I mean, you guys may have seen that on these old motorcycles before. But yeah. Little air cool V twin. I think I said it made it in Switzerland or something. Or Sweden. It's nice. It's a cool motor. It, it, it's patterned after the early Indians, the design and stuff. They're really a neat, neat rig. It's got a key fob that uh, you, you keep in your pocket. I, I have to watch it because the battery will go dead if I leave it too long. And this, uh, and I'll go ahead and shut this back off. This uh, this key fob, you can, you know, uh, lock it, unlock it, the saddlebags. Stuff like that, and you can do the same thing on the tank here. As long as the fob is within a certain locate, a certain distance of the thing, and the windshield goes up and down electrically. It's a cool old beast, and they really did a good job on it. Because I'm not really a bagger person, and bikes I've had at one point I always had five bikes all at once, but but I've always had bikes over the years. But at one point um, I had mostly sport bikes and stuff. So, I uh, uh, was surprised how much I enjoy this old bagger and how much protection it gives you in the cold weather and the rain. And then this is the wife's Scout Bobber. Haven't started it in a while. Um, haven't rode it in a while. Having the dogs kind of change things quite a bit with us and we're trying to work out right now some things to make sure we use these a little more. This is electronic fuel injection as well. Let's see if this thing starts. I haven't started it in a while. You can hear the fuel pump boot up on it. for her and uh, he made uh, guitar straps and stuff he started making more of those and going into that instead of these and uh, the la he made one for Johnny Depp and people like that he said so and then again these are they say Spirit Lake Iowa Indian makes them in uh, by Polaris and then of course here's a my Polaris 450 four-wheeler and then I keep my little trailer up here now but uh, um, I use this, to, it's funny because I use that to take the garbage down to the curb. And uh, and this thing has been super handy. I mean, very, very handy. I didn't buy the, I could have probably bought a thousand or bigger, but uh, um, it, that works perfect. I mean, I'm shocked at how much I use it. But yeah, this is kind of another, these are more little toys or things in, uh, that belong with the fleet here. I keep a little crash cart up here too with a compressor and stuff like that for airing up tires and doing things up here. And, uh, but yeah, this is uh, the three bay I have up here at the main house. And then the one you guys usually see or the one I work in the most and I'll be working in the day to keep working on that 66 will be um, the, um, out the main garage out uh, out to the side of the property over by the swimming pool 
But yeah, all right, you guys. I figured that uh, I'd kind of show you. I've been promising to show the completed product with this engine uh, and stuff uh, that I put in. And just so you could uh, see the completed product. And then uh, I'll run it and use it. And um, probably middle of or towards the end to the beginning of September, maybe. I'm still working on it. I'll be going out to Moab and uh, Colorado and wheeling out there and this thing should be ready to go because I did a ton of work to it and uh, put a front locker in it and uh, this fresh motor and fuel injection so it can run at altitude. And I did some exhaust work and I did some a little more electrical. So this beast should be Pretty much 100% ready to go out and uh, run well in high altitudes and rough terrain. So, all right, you guys, see you later.